Please listen. Never before seen images of the Capitol riot revealed at the impeachment trial of Donald Trump. The chilling new surveillance from inside the Capitol, the moment the pro Trump mob smashes its way through. Then Vice President Mike Pence and his family evacuated as rioters shout, Hang him! Hero Officer Eugene Goodman ushering Senator Mitt Romney to safety. Senators rushed out of the chamber, steps away from the mob. Democrats making their case, calling Trump the insider in chief. Now Trump is reacting in private why he's furious with his defense team, plus what the White House is saying about all this tonight. The major change to CDC guidelines on masks, the things you can do to reduce COVID spread by over 90%. The mission to ramp up vaccinations, new mega sites opening, among them the home of the Mets, plus pharmacies gearing up to offer in-store vaccinations within days. What you need to know. The 10-year-old girl kidnapped the hero sanitation workers who came to her rescue. And our series on your taxes, the warning from the IRS, the scams growing during the pandemic. This is NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Good evening, everyone. In stunning and graphic new detail, the country tonight reliving the trauma and horror of the attack on the U.S. Capitol five weeks ago today. On day two of the impeachment trial of former President Trump, House prosecutors introducing never-before-seen security camera images of the invading mobs. Members of Congress, staffers, even Vice President Pence seen rushing to safety barely ahead of the intruders. Also, never-before-released police radio traffic was played. Outnumbered officers heard desperately pleading for help. The dramatic sound and video coming as House impeachment managers began outlining their case that President Trump incited the attack on the Capitol. It never gets easier to see, but we must warn you the images are upsetting. Here's Peter Alexander with late details. Watch where they're coming. Tonight, House Democrats releasing never-before-seen video from inside the attack that they say former President Trump incited. Body camera footage from an officer being beaten by the mob. <laughs> Radio calls for help. This is now effectively a riot. And new security footage showing those rioters entering the Capitol. The second man through the window is wearing full tactical body armor. The graphic presentation, including our first look at the moment Vice President Pence was evacuated from the Senate chamber. Another camera showing Mitt Romney being led away, then quickly turned around by heroic officer Eugene Goodman. And Democratic leader Chuck Schumer also evacuated, then rushed back in the opposite direction to avoid the oncoming crowd. They were coming at the urging of Donald Trump to keep Congress, a separate branch of government, from certifying the results of a presidential election. More new security footage of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's staffers hustling into her office minutes before rioters arrive. An aide heard whispering for help. We need an ambulance and in day one of their argument, Democrats pinning responsibility for last month's attack on Mr. Trump. The evidence will show you that ex-President Trump was no innocent bystander. It will show that Donald Trump surrendered his role as commander-in-chief and became the inciter-in-chief of a dangerous insurrection. Portraying the assault on the Capitol is the culmination of a months-long campaign by the former president to rile up his supporters with what they call the big lie, using these clips of Mr. Trump. The only way they can take this election away from us is if this is a rigged election. We're going to win this election. It's a rigged election. These false claims about election fraud, that was the drumbeat being used to inspire instigate and ignite them to anger them democrats playing these videos of trump supporters who were at the capitol to try to prove their case i want to stop right there tell my viewers that this is upsetting material that's being ushered out to the general public the day that it actually occurred watching it live whenever the count was supposed to have taken place towards officially making it the, the official count 
it upset me so badly that it literally brought tears to my eyes. Today, reliving the same thing, but now seeing it in different views once more brings tears to my eyes. To think that people actually thought that they could do this and get away with it or formigate some sort of new institution out of doing this, that just tells you the scariness about how people have been incited, how people has been brainwashed, how people has been misled by Donald J. Trump that fed them all kinds of stuff, the stuff that they wanted to hear, just so Donald J. Trump could take them down to cleaners and take them for everything that they was worth as far as all the money that he gained from the time the election was over with from the time that he went back down to Florida. The bottom line is this. Donald J. Trump should be looked upon as being a scoundrel. He should be looked upon as somebody that wanted to defy the very fabric of our democracy. And Donald Trump will be looked upon as being an instigator to all of this. Now, what type of punishment follows and behind all of this? I don't know. I don't know, but I've said before and I'll say again, you can't try him twice. So whatever the government's going to do, they need to go ahead and do it now, whole hog or die, as the little farmer used to say. Whatever you're going to do, you need to do it now because you can't go back and recharge him again on federal and state crimes pertaining to this. It's it's one of, it's got to be one of the saddest moments in the American history going back since our development which was a little less than 250 years ago. It's got to be one of the most saddest heartbreaking, heart-wrenching moments that we as an American society have ever had to sit back and watch, listen and observe towards the fundamentals of we the people. It's got to be the worst of the worst. And the, simply the reason why it's the worst of the worst is because it's coming from within. It's not coming across the pond pertaining to our terrorists. We know our terrorists hate us. We know our terrorists wants to kill us. We know the terrorist wants to do crippling damage to us. We know the terrorist wants to divide us and keep us separated so that we'll become more weak. We know these things. But would you have ever thought that these things would have occurred amongst our own people, in our own nation, among the, our own body? <laughs> I thought I was following what we were called to do. President Trump requested that we be in D.C. on the 6th. You heard it from them. They were doing what he wanted them to do. He alone, our commander-in-chief, had the power to stop it. And he didn't. And Democrats say Mr. Trump already knew the impact of his words, highlighting his tweet days before the election, celebrating a caravan of Trump supporters that the Biden campaign said tried to run one of its buses off the road. Yeah. His response was to tweet the video of the incident that had fight music, joke about it, and call those individuals in that incident patriots. Democrats then pointing to this comment at the rally before the deadly riot began. We fight like hell, and if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. He told them to fight like hell, and they brought us hell on that day. 
Mr. Trump's lawyers have said their client was using the word fight in a figurative sense, that he never incited violence, accusing Democrats of ignoring this comment from that same speech. I know that everyone here will soon be marching over to the Capitol building to peacefully and patriotically make your voices heard. But tonight, those same lawyers are under intense pressure from Mr. Trump, publicly silent without his Twitter account, but privately fuming about his legal team's day one performance, according to multiple sources. One of his lawyers today dismissing that. Did President Trump express his displeasure about the performance yesterday? Far from it. Republican Ted Cruz arguing the Democrats' case is doomed to failure, that the former president will still be acquitted. It is reminiscent of of Shakespeare that it is full of sound and fury and yet signifying nothing. And they're going through political theater because for four years, congressional Democrats, they've been obsessed, they've been consumed with hatred for President Trump. And late tonight, Mitt Romney described the new videos as overwhelmingly distressing and emotional, saying it brings tears to your eyes and that he looked forward to thanking Officer Goodman, but he would not predict whether it would convince any of his Republican colleagues to vote to convict. Lester? Peter Alexander outside the Capitol, thanks. And we want to return to that newly released video today. Pete Williams has been examining it. Pete, what are you finding? Well, Lester, we saw some new video where the House managers say the rioters first entered the Capitol. Two windows at ground level, one broken out by throwing a piece of wood, another smashed in using a riot shield taken from a police officer, broken out, the FBI says, by a member of the Proud Boys. Investigators say that group played a key role in planning and leading the attack and assaulting police officers. The House managers say President Trump must have known the siege would turn violent because social media was so full of talk about storming the Capitol to stop the vote count, Lester. All right, Pete, thanks very much. I want to bring in Capitol Hill correspondent Casey Hunt. Casey, what was the impact of today's presentation on senators? Lester, it was a gut-wrenching and emotional day on the Hill. Those videos showing just how close senators came to something much worse. Mitt Romney saying he didn't realize until he saw himself in security footage today. But the question, of course, is whether this changes any minds. And in conversations I'm having with members on both sides of the aisle, there is a sense voting to acquit President Trump will be harder for some after today, but it's an uphill climb for Democrats to win over the 17 Republicans they'd need for a conviction. Still Lester. a lot more left in this trial. All right, thank you, Casey. Kristen Welker is at the White House. Kristen, what's the president saying about all this? I know he's been relatively silent on it. Lester, we've asked multiple times if the White House and President Biden have a reaction to the developments on Capitol Hill, and so far there's been no no response. Today, Press Secretary Jen Psaki was pressed repeatedly on the matter. She noted that President Biden has addressed the attack on Capitol Hill on multiple occasions. But with the White House trying to counter-program the trial, she says they won't be commenting on daily developments. Lester. All right, Kristen, we'll let you get out of the snow. Thanks. In just 60 seconds, the CDC's new guidance on best mask protection, plus thousands of pharmacies about to offer COVID vaccines. We're going to tell you what you need to know. My plaque psoriasis, the itching. We are learning more tonight after that deadly shooting at a health clinic in Buffalo, Minnesota. Authorities say Gregory Ulrich opened fire, killing medical assistant Lindsay Overbay. She was a mother of two, four others wounded. Court records now show he had been barred from that clinic, accused of harassing and threatening a doctor there. And we learned today that Bruce Springsteen is now facing a drunk driving charge in New Jersey. The National Park Service confirming he was arrested in Sandy Hook in November. He was cited for alleged DWI, reckless driving. Authorities say he was cooperative during his arrest. TMZ now reporting he has a court date in a few weeks. When we come back to the broadcast tonight, celebrating the Tuskegee Airmen, Robin Roberts and her very... Opening the door to scammers. Insurance is cool. Only pay for what you need. <laughs> Shortly after, there was a terrifying banging on the chamber doors. I will never forget that sound. Shouts and panicked calls to my husband and to my sons, instructions to flee, and then the constant whirring of the gas masks filtering the air. The chamber of the United States House of Representatives turned to chaos. For Donald Trump, it was a very different day. Earlier, I showed you Donald Trump's desperate attempts to maintain power, ignoring adverse court rulings, attacking elected officials, 
pressuring his Justice Department, even attacking his own vice president. You saw a man who refused to lose, who was desperate to retain power by any means necessary. You saw a man willing to attack anyone and everyone who got in his way. And you saw a man who thought he could play by different rules. He told his supporters, as my colleague Ms. Plaskett just showed you, exactly what he thought those different rules were. Combat, fight, violence. This was not just one speech. This was weeks and weeks of deliberate effort by Donald Trump to overturn the election results so that he didn't have to give up the presidency. The speech on January 6th builds on, refers to, and amplifies that same pattern, the pattern Trump had used and broadcasted for months. He refused to lose, his attacks on others, and his different rules. And that's the reason why he needs to be categorized as someone who has basically went AWOL. He obviously had something in his head that burnt out, that sizzled, that wasn't right. And you know, people get sick every day in various ways, regardless whether it's cancer, diabetes, tuberculosis, AIDS, the common cold, COVID-19, or whatever. People's organs fail in their bodies, just like your brain, just like your heart. And it shouldn't be looked upon in any other form, I believe, than just in a medical terminology form that the guy basically just went AWOL. He went AWOL and Congress really didn't know how to deal with him because he was so overbearing. He was so loud. He was so aggressive. He was so uh, intense and, 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 and passionate in, in what he believed and how he believed in it. And this is the end results of all of that. It's, it's, it's one of the saddest days in American history. I just want to tell my viewers, I appreciate you taking the time to listening and watching this. I have been punished or disciplined by YouTube pertaining to my first message that I put out late yesterday evening in regards to XYZ. Um, for some reason, I'm in violation towards putting that type of violence on my YouTube channel, even though it's on every major network and on ma every major uh, deal that there's out there towards people streamlining from the news, even though it's all over, I've got punished towards, towards it not being seen on my YouTube channel. Hopefully they will change that. They will realize that the violent behavior was something that we have all become exposed to, not just the violent behavior on my particular uh, social media platform, but on probably just about everybody else's social media platform that streamlined today, because like I said, it, was, it has been on basically every channel, major network channel here in America. So hopefully they will reconsider towards taking my YouTube off line because I do realize uh, using these social media platforms is just like having a driver's license, which is a privilege and not a right. You don't have the right to abuse any Facebook or YouTube channel, any type of social media platform. You don't have a right to violate their instruments or their tools. It is a privilege, and I understand that that privilege can be taken from that particular person that is abusing their privilege the same way as somebody who has abused their driving rights or their driving privileges. 
You only have the right if you have performed in the privileges. Once you have showed yourself to not be within the restraints of the privileges, then those rights or those privileges gets taken away from you. And it's the same way with using social media platform, in which I know that and I realize that. And I try to always tell my viewers before they see something that is going to be somewhat disturbing that if you warn them ahead of time that what they're going to see or hear could actually be detrimental in, in what they're what they're uh, observing on your particular channel, if you warn them ahead of time, uh, that's about the best that you can do, especially if you're mainstreaming it off of national TV. <clears throat> Thanks again to my viewers, and good luck to all of us. Like I said, I've never seen the country become so violent in its own behavior. Thanks again, and shalom.